This roadshow is brought to you by researchbytes.com. Good evening, friends, and a very happy new year to everyone. Thank you for coming for our Q3 earnings. It's really loud. Thank you for coming for our Q3 earnings. As usual, um, we'll start with some commentary from uh, our CEO, Chanda, for the quarter, and then uh, we'll take questions. You can I request Chanda to say a few words. Thanks, Pradeepta. Um, happy New Year to all of you. Nice to see you all for the earnings. It's not working here, Pradeepta. Yeah, it's been a good quarter from the point of view of a week Q3 normally plus the Chennai situation. I'll just give you the breakup and you'll understand why. In rupee terms, we have delivered a 0.7% growth sequentially to 27,364. And in constant currency terms, we have delivered a 0.5% growth the 0.5% growth CC splits as 1.1% international growth and a 0.6% decline, the overall number due to India. Our EBIT margin is credible at 26.6%, which is our well within our range. And the net income growth is at 6,110 crores with a sequential growth of 0.9%. The digital business has done very well at 4% sequential growth, which is particularly important because our retail business has been flat this quarter, more or less. Today, the digital business contributes to about 13.7%. Attrition has come down sharply. The annualized attrition, which was over 17% last quarter, has come down to 15.1% this quarter. The 100 million customers have gone up by one, and there have been very good client traditions across the board in different bands, 1, 5, 10, and $20 million. From an industry point of view, the growth has come in all industries. All the industries have positive growth this quarter. And from a market point of view, North America and Europe have delivered very good growth. Good deal pipeline and the good deal wins. We would like to announce nine wins, well spread out, three in North America, three in Europe, couple in Latin America, and one in UK. And then our digital learning platform continues to do very well. Last quarter, we had, we had trained about 30,000 TCSers, and that number is about 70,000 at the end of this quarter. Igneo is receiving significant traction. We have gone live in the deals that we announced last quarter, and we have done some more deals this quarter. I think overall, it's been a steady quarter, considering we had a lot of headwinds. And traditionally, this is a weak quarter with a lot of furloughs. With those comments, I'll open it up for Q&A. Thank you. We'll start with Kritika from CNBC. Hi, gentlemen. Wishing you a very happy new year. Uh, to begin with, um, can you quantify the areas? Uh, for instance, Latin America softness was abated last quarter. Where, what are the areas that you're still remaining or seeing some kind of um, headwinds in? Specifically, Japan and Diligenta were soft last quarter. Can you give us an outlook? And even India, for instance. I think the uh, last quarter we said basically Japan, Diligenta, and Latin America. And then we had said uh, softness in the energy. Yeah. 
sector. Yeah. And uh, Latin America has done very well this quarter. And we think that from here it will continue to grow in general. But the size of that business is not large enough for me to rule out any volatility between quarters. Still, you will see some volatile behavior. Mm -hmm. But it has done well this quarter. And we think structurally it should continue to, continue to perform better going forward. Diligenta, I think, at least has one more quarter to go mm -hmm. for it to, uh, to hit, the, hit the bottom okay. uh, before it starts at least being flattish, if not growth. And uh, Japan, I think we just need to wait and see a little bit more. I think Japan is a structural problem. It's just that it's taking time for the integration and new customer adoption and <coughs> winning business, etc. It's taking time. So I would like to give it some more time before I make a big commentary on Japan. Yeah. In India, there has been a huge drop yeah. this quarter uh, because it's not only affected the India revenue. The, India, the size of the drop has affected 60 basis points of growth in the overall company size. So that's a pretty significant size. And uh, so India continues to be volatile. Okay, uh, to Rajesh, uh, you maintain your margins despite a volatile quarter. Uh, firstly, uh, will you remain within the 26 to 28 uh, uh, percentage margin band, as you had indicated? And can you break up margins uh, for us in terms of the impact of the Chennai floods uh, of currency headwinds? Uh, and also, what's the volume growth this quarter? I, don't, I didn't see it in the press release. Hmm. So in terms of volume, uh, we did about uh, 0.4. We have a 0.1 from realization and another uh, 0.2 from currency. That gives us the 0.7 uh, revenue growth. Right On the margin side, um, we did decently on the gross margin. So if you look at it, our gross margins have expanded by about 20 basis points. Uh, we have lost primarily in the SGNA side, which is, co is contributed from all of these factors. The furloughs contribute to that. You would have seen our utilization has gone down. Uh, the impact of the Chennai floods, quite a lot of that cost also is sitting out there. Not much to break out. It's about uh, 70 bips down on that. And exchange has contributed to a positive about 15 basis points. So totally about 50 uh, bips down on that. So in terms of long-term outlook on margin, there is no current immediate threat to that margin band. We continue to project that. And as and when things change on that, we will call that out. But as of now, we are fairly comfortable staying with that 26 to 28 band. Okay, I promise many people I'll stick to three questions. So lastly, uh, Chandra, there's been a lot of concern with respect to protectionism. I know this is something that, uh, protectionism, I know this is something that uh, the industry has been preparing for for the last couple of years. You've also increased uh, local hiring uh, in your overseas markets, but specifically to the visa hike as a part of the omnibus spending bill. Uh, have you been able to quantify how much of an impact will that have uh, on revenues going forward? And do you believe that protectionism concerns from the United States have increased over the last couple of quarters? No, I think uh, um, fundamentally, I've always maintained that uh, till the jobs, grow, jobs yeah. growth happens in all markets, you should mm. factor in um, protection tendencies in different markets. And the visa fee hike is more a cost issue than a revenue issue. And uh, it depends on uh, how many visas we use, vis-a-vis -vis how much work we do offshore, how much local hires we do, etc. So we have an idea about um, what the impact will be based on the trend. But we need to see what will be going forward our uh, resource deployment model to mitigate some of that. So that's, uh, we've got multiple options. But I, I wouldn't overly raise a big concern on, on, on that, because on our size and scale, yes, it, we don't like it. it. It adds cost, and also it's, uh, um, it's something that's very one-off, okay, uh, one-off from the point of view of to only certain companies are affected. But uh, I wouldn't write, I wouldn't talk uh, that it's a very, very big issue or anything like that. Thank you, and uh, wish you all a very happy new year. Uh, but Chandra, first uh, question would be that uh, you were earlier dealing with uh, higher expectations in the market a few quarters back. 
And after, this is sixth quarter of not meeting the street expectations, even though the street has tempered down its expectations from TCS quite a bit. 1% despite Chennai is what uh, the street was working with for a constant currency growth. Where has the dip come in? And going forward, what is the kind of guidance you give for Q4 and FY17? Okay, I don't give uh, guidance. Okay, we... Uh... Outlook. I don't give guidance, first of all. The second thing is that it depends on what you call as estimate. Okay, we have, um, we track analyst uh, uh, estimates and we get, I don't know, 18 or 20 different estimates. So we have the range and then we have the median. Even in all these quarters, we have been within the range. And the consensus estimate is whether it's a median or sometimes above median, we have missed that. But I can't do anything about the consensus system. I can only explain to you what happens to the business. So if you ask me about the business as it, as it stands, you will see in our investor presentation deck, um, North America has grown 1.4% sequentially this quarter. And that should be taken into account in the context of the Chennai hit and the furloughs. In spite of that, it has delivered a 1.4% sequential growth, which is our key market. Europe in this quarter also sequentially has grown more than 2.5%. Again, that has to be taken in the context of the other two factors. And if you take from, uh, and you can either, you can either isolate the India business, which could happen either way. Let's say if this 0.6% is not being talked about, then you have a different view. If you take the industry point of view, our BFS business has grown. Manufacturing is about 2%. Life census is 4.5%. And all the, all the industries are 1.5% or 2%, etc., except the India business. Energy? Energy has degrown. Um, I don't remember the exact number. And that we already, already told you that energy will degrow, but energy is too small. Far too small, it's about 2% or something like that on the overall business. So that doesn't, doesn't move the needle either way. So I think overall, if you look at the, and the digital has grown 4%. If you see the key indicators, absolutely things are fine. But if the f footprint or the print is not good, I think I can't misses somebody's ex estimates, I can't do much. No, more it. than expectations, Chandra. What I also wanted to pinpoint also the that fact the that the Chennai. Also the fact that the constant currency to dollar, cross-currency, yes. is more than what anyone has estimated. It's 80 bips. Mm. Okay? Mm. So that is also another factor. So I can't, with currency moving so uh, rapidly, we also can't predict. We can't even guide people towards that no, because that, currencies are moving. That's fine. So, so I can't be uh, precise about that, mm -hmm. but overall, if you look at the quality of growth, mm -hmm. the industries, the markets, the focus on digital, mm -hmm. and all the key markets, I think are quite quite fine. All right. Uh, so if we look at uh, the same period last year, even though we don't do a YOY, but then it's furloughs and the holiday season and all that, uh, a lackluster quarter. So com in comparison with that. It has been weaker than what it was the same period last year. And also, for the last five, six years, you've been also beating the NASCOM industry growth target. And that looks like a very bleak chance now in this particular financial year. So putting both into perspective, do you think that business overall is not growing as fast as it would have been anticipated or what it was in the last year? So there are two comments on this. I mean, definitely it's not going as fast as last year because we already done nine months. And uh, we have said three headwinds all through the year. At the end of first quarter itself, we said we, we are going to see that for the rest of the year. So those three headwinds are playing out as much as we expected. So there is no surprise in that. The only surprise this year is the combination of furloughs and the Chennai flood made Q3 much more weaker than what Q3 normally is. Okay, and then, you know, everybody had to guess. Even I couldn't have come and told you in November, somewhere, somewhere in November, this is how much, how much you could, you could uh, estimate. So we have also been very careful in managing um, the flow. So, so I think, you know, somebody could have estimated 1% run, somebody could have estimated, even among the analysts, there are analysts who have 
estimated close to what we have done. There are analysts who have estimated higher. So I think you can't say this analyst is right, this analyst is wrong. But the fact of the matter is that the dollar revenue has degrown by $10 million from uh, 4156 to 4146 or whatever. Yeah. And do you expect the next financial year to be a slightly better than this? What so, type of so I think going forward, the indications I can give you are uh, I don't have any negative news. From, apart from what I've shared with you, except, you know, I know that Diligenta will have one more quarter of degrowth. And I think that uh, there is not, not anything I can say about Latin America negatively, but it will have some volatility primarily because of the size of the business is not still very large. But I think we have very good clients and we have turned the corner, I think. Uh, we've seen a good positive growth this quarter, both in terms of the revenue and also order book. Then India has been a much more hit than what we would have liked, what we would have thought. But it's a significant hit in India. And uh, India stabilizing has been one of my wishes for a long time. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, Chennai, no impact in the next quarter. It's no, all recouped. No, it's completely. all recouped, yeah. yeah. It was only the, that period. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Otherwise, it's positive. Uh, Happy New Year uh, to all of you. Uh, I'll, uh, I wanted to know uh, what your comments are regarding the general demand environment currently. Uh, how do you see it uh, panning out? See, I think the, uh, there are three or four different angles, right? First is that uh, overall we have not heard anything negative from any, any of our customers. So I think customers are going to continue to invest in digital, continue to grow. Uh, so that opportunity is going to be there. Now we need to see how fast they will ramp up. Usually when the new year, for them it's a new year, first quarter of their year, they all would have come back from vacation. Sometimes the ramp up starts in February, sometimes the ramp up starts in March, especially for discretionary work. And we need to wait and see uh, in entire January to see how it's going to start. So that is one factor. And currently I'm not overly concerned about any of the macro, what you see in China, etc. But you've got to watch if anything happens. But if you were to talk about any uh, any structural challenges that you see for the industry in general, what would that be? I uh, I personally believe that the opportunities are large for the industry, and some of them will play out very fast. Some of them will play out slower. For example, digital is a huge opportunity, but every company is not going to be able to pull off that investments, pull off the transformations at the pace at which you want. So that will follow a different cycle. And um, on managed services, definitely automation will play a part. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of pilots happening. A lot of customers are very keen. And how fast that automation will happen, how fast the productivity benefits will accrue, and what does it do to the industry. Again, that window has to be worked out. But these are the two major trends. Also, uh there were talks about a uh, buyout of the uh, Perot unit of Dell. Uh, would you be able to give us an update? There are talks about so many acquisitions. I, uh, I can't comment on market speculation. Uh, Every day there is a speculation in the newspaper. I can't comment on that. Okay, thank you. Joshua <coughs> uh, Hello, sir. Sir, uh, I was just a few questions on digital, sir. This quarter it grew 4% QOQ, so last year it was 10%. So just trying to understand is the seasonality you see in general revenues also playing in to digital? And can you give me some clarity? You said retail was flat. If you could explain how that affected digital growth. So, I mean, 4% QOQ and digital is a significant number, okay? That's a pretty good number. Very, very happy with that. And usually digital has a huge role in... Uh, in retail. And in Q3, because of the holiday season, the digital, the retail businesses pretty much focus on operations. They don't do any uh, discretionary, pro discretionary projects. So most of the digital revenues have come from non-retail industries. That's the only point I was making. So this is a trend that you should see even uh, in the years going ahead. Meaning which? Uh, the, that the fact that the growth in digital will be higher in the first two quarters and then slow down in uh, it depends on the size and scale, etc. But 4% sequential growth on any service line or any industry in Q3 is a pretty good growth. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'll take it any year. <laughs> okay. Fine. Good year, bad year, it doesn't matter. Hi, sir. Uh, happy New Year to all of you. Taking uh, forward the point of digital, I want to understand if you could throw some light on maybe the deal size or some other matrices which help us understand the business a little more than we do right now. Can't give you. <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> any any matrix at all? Nothing more than what I can give you. See, we when we feel comfortable that we can give a metric and stand by it and explain it very clearly, we give it. Otherwise, there's no point in okay. just but give a number which will look very different next quarter. There's no point. Fair enough. Because any number we give, you'll have to model, you should be able to model it. We give a number, you can't use it in modeling, there's no point. Then it becomes a matter of... Uh, okay. Uh, but given the high competitive intensity, do you see any kind of pricing pressure in digital and overall or other businesses? We don't think so. We have always maintained that. Um, we have not only maintained this year, if you see the last three, four years, we have shown you, if you just add up our uh, pricing, quarter on quarter, we have come flat. So we don't see we don't see a pricing pressure. Okay, just last question on uh, utilizations. Uh, uh, where do you see it normalizing? What is the trend this quarter? I understand Chennai impact was there. No. Yeah, I think uh, we have said that. No, we are comfortable at around 84, 85 percent. So we are very comfortable. We'll, we'll if required, we'll ramp it up. Because size is large. We are about 344,000 plus now. So required, we can stretch it. This quarter, for obvious reasons, it came down, which is okay. But even at the reduced levels, what you are seeing today is a pretty good utilization. Most people would love to have that utilization. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ushan from Z. Hello, sir. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, uh, we'd like to understand the setup uh, of the new business. You set up new business units, uh, digitate earlier, and uh, at the same time, there is Blue Ocean Ventures as well. So how is the scenario over there? And also, can you throw some light on uh, you know, how you going forward looking at it? I've never heard about this Blue Ocean Ventures. So if you know something, you tell me. So okay, question. not in this year. I've not heard about it. If you, any of you know, you tell me what it is, then let me understand. Then with regard to Digitate, again, it's an internal name. As far as our announcement to the market, we have an automation product called Igneo. That's the only thing we've announced. And that's the only thing I can talk about. So any key expectation from the budget going forward? No, like nothing, throw? actually nothing. All right. Nothing. We don't have big expectations of the budget, at least from our industry point of view. Nothing much, I think. Hi, three questions, Chandra. Um, firstly, on how uh, the demand outlook has already been asked to you, but considering the fourth quarter is always important because many people believe it's also a good metric or an exit rate to gauge the growth, at least in the first half of the next fiscal. If you could just give clarity that how this quarter is spanning out, will it be any better? Because based on that, fiscal 2016-17 can be, uh, uh, the growth in 2016-17 can be expected. That's the first question. So second question is on, with regards to the buyout strategy. Like many companies these days have said that we are just interested in buying IT firms which have IP-led platforms and not merely buying companies which have historically worked on the labor model. If you could just throw some, uh, what is TCS really looking at priority-wise? Say, also give some, what is the sweet spot in the revenue per se? Last time you had mentioned about certain industries. Energy and healthcare is what interests you. And so finally, the question on, in this quarter, uh, BFSI has not really grown. BFSI is one of your largest clients uh, it brings in almost 45, 50% business. Retail has been flat. Are we really seeing some problem, at least in the largest accounts, largest clients? You don't talk about client specific, but where it has reached to a size or a scale where continue mining, farming, generating more business from them is becoming a concern. And what are the measures which TCS would be taking, at least in these largest spaces? Thank you. I think for the first question, uh, the answer is not only Q4, every quarter is important. Not only Q4. If you're looking at exit rate, exit rate does not happen just because you do Q4 well. 
So it's a combination of what you do in Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So every quarter is important. Second thing is with respect to Q4 uh, this year, the only comment I can make is that it will be better than Q3. And I cannot say anything more than that, primarily because of two reasons. Traditionally, Q4 is always better than Q3. So I think that trend will continue. There is nothing to suspect that that trend will not continue. And how much more it'll, it, it, it will be better very much depends on how fast the ramp-ups will start in the new year and how fast the discretionary projects ramp-up will start. It will start in January or in February or in definitely usually it starts sometime in February. Sometimes it, gets start, it starts in March. And those two factors will definitely impact how much better it will be. So that's the only comment I can make as far as Q4 is concerned. With regard to acquisition, I think we have always said our strategy has not changed. We have always said that there are two or three things we look for. We look for a penetration in the market or a specific industry. We have said U.S. healthcare is important to us, and we have also said Europe as a market is very important to us. These two will look at from acquisition point of view. From a platform point of view, any platform which can bring IP, but also has, we think that we can grow. So every company has its own strategy. It's not that it's, if something is good for a company A, need not necessarily be good for company B. It depends on what skill sets you have, what gaps you have, and where you think that you can get value out of what you buy. It depends on the time timeline in which you are operating. So it's, it's, it's very different. So I can't really comment on any particular company strategy. For us, it is a certain industries. I have never remember to have mentioned energy as a vertical where we will be acquiring. I have mentioned healthcare. I have mentioned US and Europe as two key markets. And then the third aspect is any platforms. These are, this, that's what I would say about our uh, bio strategy. And your third question was regarding? Yes, huh? Yes, sir. Huh? Clients. Huh? Yes, any client? Uh, yeah, I visited. think, you know, the BFSA number is also being accentuated by the drop in diligent revenues. See, actually, if we unfortunately don't give the BFS and I separately, our BFS is done very well compared to I. So I is dragging, and I is also affected by... Uh, yeah. diligent are. and there are no client specific issues if there are very client specific issues I'll I'll come and declare it because if you have client specific issues that will definitely drag so there are no client specific issues uh, Chandra typically January is the time when clients decide their uh, calendar year budget so from the conversation that you've had so far what is the overall outlook uh, within your larger clients in U.S., Europe, uh, for 2016 IT budget specifically? See, we uh, still have to get the full feedback. Um, so far, what I have heard, I have not heard anything negative. Okay. But I still need to wait for a few more weeks okay. to consolidate all the inputs. Still not done. So we'll hear more in, in, in this month. Mm. So we'll have a better picture um, sometime next month. But we have not heard anything negative. But has there been a sense that IT budgets are declining versus last year? No, I have not heard that. Okay. Not heard that. Uh, Ajoy has been very silent. Ajoy, in terms of attrition, uh, it's come down. But uh, utilization, uh, is that a seasonal impact and will that continue through the next quarter? As we said, we would like to maintain our utilization upwards of 83, yeah. that is excluding trainees. We are at 84, so which is pretty, pretty much where it is. It also depends upon the kind of plans and investments that we have in future. So from that point of view, I think 84 is pretty good. Attrition has come down, so all our employee engagement initiatives are playing out. So if you look at the quarterly, the, then you will really see, as Chandra mentioned in the beginning, so from 4.3 to 3.8, that's a significant kind of reduction in attrition. And you'll be able to maintain attrition within 15% band? We, we would like to bring it down further. Given that Q4 has some amount of seasonal fluctuation. Correct, correct. Q4 usually is higher than Q3, but that is the quarterly part. But we'll have to wait and see so as I want, to how I, it I want him to make it unusual. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll, okay. so we'll definitely try and bring attrition down. I think we are on the right trajectory. So it's a question of the engagements that we are doing and everything else that is going on, especially the digital training that we talked about, where we, have, we said that we will be training 100,000 people on digital. About 70,000 people have gone through that program already. So significant work that is on, and I'm sure this is going to have a positive impact on the employee morale and on the retention side. 
Okay, and I, I know you spoke about uh, India Chandra, but just nitpicking a little bit. Has there been a, is this largely client delays, the regular <coughs> volatility that you've been seeing in India, has there been a one-off impact in this quarter? And I know you can't predict, but how long will the volatility and softness in India continue? Because it's dragged down uh, constant currency growth by almost 50 basis points in this quarter. Yeah, 60 basis points in this quarter, yeah. Um, see, I think there is nothing, uh, like nothing, um, uh, one-off about it or nothing uh, structural about it, hmm. but uh, it's the nature, it's the nature of the market, I guess. So we have reduced our exposure to India big time, okay? We used to have 13% of our business in India. Now we are operating at about 6% or so. So in spite of that, the volatility is there. So we'll see, we'll see what will. And how long will that softness continue? No, I think it's, as far as the immediate term, I think it's, it's, I think it's one-off. I don't think that it, it's, it, okay. it's not going to be next quarter. Okay. But whether it will again appear two quarters later, I don't know. Fair. That's my problem. It's not, it's not that this quarter and next quarter. Fair. Nisha has a last word. Last word. <laughs> no, uh, so Chandra, can you throw more light on the digital space? Because you've constantly been increasing the revenue share also coming in from that side. I wanted to understand now that you've started giving and you're more comfortable with the revenue percentage and contribution, could you be able to also share with us the margin kind of margins that digital space uh, throws up? Five billion in five years was the target. Are we exceeding that? Uh, so can you throw more light on the digital space? So I think, uh, I don't think that margin should be a concern because uh, we are comfortable in our 26 to 28%. Whether digital can give us a little more cushion, probably yes, but that those are not, those are not very, uh, very important because we decide to operate in the 26 to 28 range and we are comfortable operating in that range. And sometimes we would like to operate 27 plus, sometimes uh, if the, it is quite a good range for us to operate. So that's not an issue. Our digital business um, fundamentally has uh, multiple flavors. Um, one, one track is the key areas of um, big data analytics and insights. Um, Internet of Things and security, uh, digital marketing and channels, and cloud. So it's a four different themes playing out, and that's driving a lot of growth. That's one flavor. The second flavor is the intellectual property we have developed. We have launched <coughs> a number of them, and we are winning business in all of them. But all of them, size is small today, so I don't want to quantify numbers. But uh, our ION assessment platform and ION per se is doing very well. Then we have our uh, platforms Chroma for HR and our platform TAP for procurement and um, accounts payable and so on and so forth. Our uh, platforms on digital merchandising, Optimera, very, very successful. We're getting a lot of interest from um, digitizing retail everywhere. Then we have our uh, customer insights platform, which made the debut this quarter and with the first client. Then we have our intelligent urban exchange platform. So we have invested in all these platforms over the last four, three, four years. And we've launched each one of these platforms to customers. And then in fact, we have uh, uh, in a big data Hadoop environment, we've launched another platform this quarter and it has gained immediate traction. But for me to quantify and then and then put a big number on it is too early because I need to be able to industrialize these platforms, scale, and then have a size that will make a big dent on TCS growth. Otherwise, I can't just go by. There's good traction, good customers. We're winning Im immediate wins, so let's put a graph and then say that it's going to be this much or that much. But the number of platforms which are intellectual property based, we have been investing and we are launching each one of them, they're getting traction. And all these platforms have got one win or two wins or whatever during the quarter, so which is a great thing. So I need to be able to see some critical mass in size and consistency before I can just branch out and then say, hey, you will minimum get so much percentage of growth or so much million dollars of growth due to the digital platforms that we are, we are doing. But we are very optimistic, very bullish, because we are doing the right things, and all of them have been taken to the market. That's the second portion. 
The third portion is about automation and igneo and so on. So three different flavors, intellectual property based, intellectual property and automation based, and services and solutions led with clients along those four tracks. So that much color I can give you. So if it by helps. now you would have got a sense at how much of total revenue contribution in absolute terms that digital is going to contribute by the And we will we will much will do much, much better than the five billion. That was a very initial estimate. I mean that's not a number to go by. We'll do much, much better. But for me to come back and then create a story and how much it is, etc., give me some time. How much are you give me estimating some time. Give me some time. at this point? Give me some time. So by the end of this financial year, how much would have <laughs> clocked in out of the five billion, if possible? So you want a you want an exclusive story on that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> No, we'll talk about it next year, Thank not you, now. Sir. Too early uh, to give you an estimate. Call it, Thank uh, you. Uh, call it an end there because we uh, want to uh, have time for the TV bites and the analyst calls that follow soon after. Thank you, Thank folks. You Happy New Year.